Hi, this is Shara with Psychic Mist Paranormal Network, and I wanted to talk to you about haunted objects and more uh, toward haunted dolls, but there's some things I think you should know. So I was scrolling around on eBay, just kind of window shopping, and I came across a picture of, a, it's called the Blue Boy, and then there was a counterpart, Pinky, and these were painted in the 1700s. Uh, my parents used to have a copy of those pictures, of those paintings hanging on their wall in the family room at uh, my family home as I was growing up. And when I saw them, I just got very nostalgic and I was like, oh my God, you know, my late parents had these and it just kind of was like, I think I want these. So I clicked on the listing. One of the first things I noticed when I clicked on the listing was that it said haunted item. And I'm thinking, well, that would be a plus. <laughs> and I checked it out. Uh, it didn't have much in the way of a description for why it was haunted. Uh, it just said that it was at a funeral home and they think that some spirits might have found their way to this picture. So I decided to write to them and ask them, you know, if anything specifically occurred that made them think that this particular item might be haunted. So I added it to my watch list and decided to uh, continue looking around on eBay. Lo and behold, isn't there another set of the pictures with the blue boy? Only this time, the counterpart, Pinky, the one that my parents had, was in it and that was even better i was like wow this is the one i really want <laughs> so i clicked on that guess what it says haunted item it made me very suspicious i'm like well let's see in this seller same seller now i smell a scam now right off the top of my head i don't really remember the description too much it was something like i don't know a friend of their grandma's or something and it was haunted but once again very vague description and uh I decided to write to them since it was the same seller and I'm like, so this item's haunted too? You know, tell me more. And uh, once again, it's the next day and I still haven't heard anything. And I'm going to show you all of this um, so you can see it now. The original listing um, that I was interested in with the boy in blue. Here is the original listing that I was interested in because my parents used to have this picture hung on their wall. kind of made me nostalgic. Um, the girl's a little bit different and you'll see the one that my parents had in the second listing. It's from the same person. Haunted items here it's listed as for $20 and it says this is low energy. It is made from brass and in England aka the boy in blue. These were in a funeral home and we believe that some spirits ended up in these pictures. So back to here listing for the blue boy and the lady in pink um, I'm gonna scroll down it says this belonged to one of our clients grandma's who died these were her treasured possessions bid with confidence if you grandma's stuff so uh, it's just funny how she, uh, he, she, whoever's selling this, you know, now all of a sudden they have a second one. Uh, it's a little different, as you can see in the framing and all, but, and the price obviously is a little bit more because it's bigger. But yeah, this is also being sold as a haunted item. Right here, haunted item. The same seller. I blocked out the name of the seller. I didn't think it was right to expose that. Uh, the person never did anything to me. So I just bring it to attention because this happens a lot. Here are my eBay messages. And as you can see, um, July 21st, July 22nd, because it was after midnight that I found it. I asked the details about the picture. Um, I said, what occurred that you feel that spirits may inhabit this picture? I really like this piece. Uh, my late parents used to have the boy in blue and female counterpart as pictures in their home. Thank you. Never got an answer so far. It's been a day. You know, it's, uh, I mean, they could still answer perhaps. So we'll see about that. And then I saw the second picture, which I like better. 
And I said, I wrote to you about another one of these items with the boy in blue, but this was the female counterpart. So this one is haunted too? Please tell me more. So, um, yet, yet to hear from them. Usually they respond pretty quick. Uh, I haven't gotten anything. Like I said, it was a little after midnight I sent the first one. So we'll see. I, uh, by the time I get this video done, we'll see if they answered. I'm going to wait to see if I get an answer, but I kind of would still like to have the picture. Um, like I said, it's kind of sentimental value to me. And of course I will test it to see if there's something attached to it. I mean, it has that certain antiquity about it, so uh, spirits could definitely be drawn to it. So for those of you that don't know, I've been involved in the paranormal my whole life, and I've been uh, studying and researching haunted objects for decades. Um, I do have some haunted objects that I keep. Some I study and pass on. Um, but I want you to know that haunted objects are not that easy to come by. Real haunted objects. And there are so many people on eBay and Etsy that are selling haunted objects, especially dolls, uh, like water. They have 50 listings of all these haunted dolls, and some people even go to the length of describing their peril in detail. You know, what happened to them and how bad they are. Now, I do want to address that as well. So out of all the objects there are, haunted dolls probably are the most popular because it kind of resembles a person, and when someone passes away, it's kind of like a person to attach to. And unfortunately, a lot of times these are children. You know, maybe it was their favorite doll or a doll that meant something to them. It was something they remember from the family. It could be an adult. Maybe it was their child's doll or just something important. Like I said, there's a whole plethora of reasons why a ghost may want to attach themselves to this doll or any object at all, really. If you are intuitive or psychic, there's a good chance that you could pick up the energies of that ghost uh, of the haunted object. So you could take that object and meditate with it and really tune into it. And yes, you could probably get names and maybe what happened to that particular ghost and maybe even why it's attached to it, um, what it's looking for. More than likely, it does not realize that it is deceased. And this can happen with not just the dolls, with any haunted object at all. You know, sure, you can kind of get a story that goes with it. Um, usually it's not full-blown details, but uh, if you're a really good psychic, you could get some good stuff. The point that I'm really trying to make here, though, is that you could go to antique shops, estate sales, and pick up $30. It doesn't mean $30 are going to be haunted or have a ghost attached to it. You'd be lucky if one of those $30 has anything attached to it at all. And sometimes it could just be residual energy that's lingering around it from all the things that are in the shop or because of the uh, people that were the live people that were surrounding it. There could be lingering energies that feels like some kind of residual trace energies of a ghost. So I become very skeptical of anybody selling a whole lot of haunted items because you're not finding those haunted items at estate sales and garage sales or yard sales you know, antique shops, maybe you could find a few here and there, unless it's your job and that's all you do is go from one place to another, to another, to another. But my biggest question too is, how do you know that that doll is haunted? What did you do with it? And you bring home a lot of these haunted items and even if they are really haunted, they usually don't do much of anything. Most of them are in a state of stasis. When you bring them home, they might do a little bit. Usually it's very subtle. Um, unless you have something that's very powerful or evil, and that is even more rare. And unfortunately, just like ghost hunting, it's become a really big business to sell haunted objects. And uh, it's kind of easy to pick out the scammers. I do want to say, though, that there are people who truly do have haunted objects that truly can find them. Um, they are also very rare. You just have to really be careful. Um, there's so many telltale signs. You know, you just have to go through the listings. If, if it's too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. Um, there's another angle to all of this, too. Now, some haunted objects can be that way because the person selling them has bound 
a ghost or a spirit to that object. Unfortunately, the majority of them bind them unwillingly, which is very unethical. And there's a lot of people who are doing that. And they will offer you all kinds of spirits. And I'm not saying this can't be done because it certainly can be done. But to bind them unethically is wrong. I know several uh, businesses out there that are doing that, and I won't mention them, but it's just, it's wrong. If you're going to bind a spirit, you need permission. I've worked with thousands of spirits, and most of them would not want to be bound to any object. However, there is a way that you can ethically bind a spirit with permission and reasons why they would choose to be bound to an object. But they don't care about those things. You know, when they bind it, they're bound for the lifetime of the object or they're bound for the lifetime, their own lifetime. And a lot of these spirits are either immortal spirits or they're spirits. They just keep going. They don't want to be stuck to you or to something else. And what happens when you die? And a lot of these type of bindings will last past your own lifetime. So that if you get the haunted object... And the spirit is, has been bound to that object. When you die, they will go with you in your afterlife. If you come back as a reincarnated soul here, they'll come back with you. And you might not realize it because you're probably not going to remember that you had a spirit there like that. And you might think you're haunted or you might uh, just think you're crazy. <laughs> You know, it just depends on where you are in your evolution and what you can pick up in that life and what you can't. If you get an ethical binding, this means that the spirit has agreed to go with that object of its own volition. And why would they do that? Because they're curious. They're curious about this world. They're curious about the kind of life we live. They're curious about us like we're curious about them. And this isn't all spirits. There are a lot out there. And there are so many spirits I couldn't even put a number to it. Uh, so many different species. And uh, they're everywhere. Astral planes and the spiritual planes. And there are so many realms and dimensions that uh, you just couldn't count everything out there. So they'd be willing. An ethical binding also has different laws that you program into this binding. So that if the person who is getting the object does not treat the spirit well, then the binding is broken. If the person who has the object dies, the binding is broken. If the object is broken or lost from the person that it originally agreed to the binding for, once again, that contract is broken. There's no reason why they have to stay with this object for a long length of time. Plus, they have the freedom to roam back and forth where they want to go. So it's not like you're confining them to a prison sentence. All you really need for the binding is a soul piece. You don't need the whole soul of the spirit. And as long as that spirit has a soul, and some of them don't, but you could just take a piece and you could use that for the binding. It still very sentient just like our higher self our higher self is our soul and when we are born here we're born with a soul but it's a soul piece if you are to meet yourself in a parallel dimension you would also meet yourself but it would be a soul piece and that soul has made different choices along the path and that's why maybe you know you're an accountant, and they decided to get into engineering. You know, it's just their own choices, but uh, each soul piece is capable of its own sentient thoughts. So going back to the whole point of this, there's not a lot of people who really are selling haunted items that are really haunted. They don't really do the work to either haunt them for you ethically, or they just go pick up things and it's old and creepy and sell you a haunted item and hope that you feel it's haunted, you know, or at least you got a nice piece. And it's sad, but this is the way it is. I do sell haunted items because people started asking me to sell things that I have worked with, that I have actually done research on. And I pick these things up and I do experiments. I do extensive paranormal research and I combine my psychic abilities, magical abilities, and forbidden arts 
along with a lot of the paranormal knowledge that I have. And like I said, I've been doing this professionally for 40 years. And I get results that these are indeed haunted objects. And I try to learn from them. That's my whole purpose. I try to learn from the spirits, the ghosts, or whatever is located in that object or attached to that object. So I don't have things for sale that are haunted often. But when I do, not only does the person get that object, but you get research that I've done as well. If I've gotten EVPs, you get EVPs. If I get pictures, you get the pictures. You know, if I get a conversation or something that they tell me about themselves or why they're attached, you get that information with it. And a lot of times it's very clear that it is the spirit or spirits attached to that object. If there's some confidential research that the spirit asked me not to reveal, I'll do that because I keep their confidentiality because these are real beings. And if you're interested in a haunted object, then you need to take it the same way. And most people do, and that's the, that's what makes me upset. You know, most people want the haunted object because they want to care for the being, and uh, a lot of these people selling them don't care at all. It's been four days since I contacted the seller asking about more information for these two items, and yeah, no answer, so I think it's safe to assume at this point they don't plan on answering me. I guess they figured I don't need to sell it to her. There'll be other people who are not going to think of that, and they're right. However, I might still buy it for the sole reason that it has sentimental value, but uh, I hate to do that. So I just wanted you to be aware of this. There are a lot of people out there that are selling things that say they're haunted and they're not haunted. And then there are other people out there selling haunted items that really are haunted. So you just have to be careful. Like I said, with all of my items, I always send in proof. Uh, there's a lady on eBay who also sells things that say that, you know, her uh, sensors went off, like paranormal sensors or, you know, EVPs and stuff. But she never sends any proof of that at all um, and if you ask her for them there's no proof of that a lot of her dolls are part of paranormal experiments she says but there's no pet and she doesn't offer it and if you ask she won't provide it so I always will um, I know a lot of people won't and don't so just be careful when you're buying this is Charlotte Psychic Miss have a great night